That's our purpose-built facility on the Loughborough University campus. Um, it's got state-of-the-art uh, technology in it to, to analyse athletes and equipment. Um, Loughborough, for those of you who don't know, um, is, is well, well um, held in high esteem in sport and also in engineering. And uh, sports technology is really combining those two things. We also have the added advantage that we have um, world-class facilities on campus. Um, it's the base for Team GB. We have lots of national performance centres, for example, cricket, tennis, netball, um, various other sports. And we have access to elite athletes. Um, we regularly have a lot of disability athletes there. We have England under-21s uh, football. We have the England Rugby League team were there two weeks ago. Um, Rugby Union are there in a few weeks. So, so we basically have the facilities and the athletes with which to apply um, engineering and um, and sort of sports um, applications to two elite performers. And this slide is just to let you know that, that we are quite keen of, uh, of extending our sports tech um, sort of remit into an IT arena. Um, and we, we are, um, we've just signed a lease um, in iCity on the Olympic Park. We're next door to BT Sport, but a big part of uh, that campus is gonna be um, sports related, uh, health, exercise, uh, and perhaps the biggest part for sports technology is going to be sports informatics. Um, so looking at sort of data uh, in sport and how that can be used. So there's a couple of things we do, um, very similar to UK sport. One of the things we do is help uh, athletes, coaches, and national governing bodies um, to increase performance at an elite level. Um, you know, we've done things from looking at the configuration of running spikes to personalise that for an athlete um, to give them a, a few extra milliseconds. We're doing work with GB rowing uh, on the rowing stroke and you know how how that can be optimised. Um, we have done work with the ITF on spinal injuries in tennis because spinal injuries are quite common in young tennis players. Um, and the second sort of bullet point there is products. Um, a lot of what we do is perception and feel particularly with things like golf clubs, tennis rackets. Um, you know, one of the problems you have in this um, sector is you have a lot of variability, which is the person, the athlete, holding the uh, ball, racket, whatever it may be. Um, perhaps the most famous two, um, well, the most famous product we've developed, uh, or infamous product, uh, is the World Cup football for Adidas. We were the research partner for Adidas on that. Um, and if there's any goalkeepers in the room, I can take questions on that as well. Um, more recently we're working on uh, testing standards for cricket helmets. Those of you who play cricket and wear a helmet, um, if it hits you between the eyes, the helmet won't do you a lot of good at the moment because the ball will probably go straight through. Um, so cricket helmets at the moment pass all the tests, um, but unfortunately don't stop the ball hitting you between the eyes, which is, is its main uh, purpose. So that's an example of where we're working with a national governing body to create a standard that actually um, is representative of, of use in sport. These are some of the people we work with. Um, our largest uh, partner, as we've said, is Adidas. Um, and we have lots of brands on there. Um, and we work with these guys in terms of product development um, and also various projects um, around the two bullet points I put up before. Um, we're a little unusual for a university in that we're actually much more close, much closer to industry. And obviously that's a key element of, of this call that we're discussing. So we, we know the industry, we know the people within the industry you know, what they want, what they don't want, and that's perhaps some of the, the, the main value we bring uh, to this call. Um, and I've got a couple of examples now, which hopefully uh, gives you some idea of the sort of things we do. So here you're looking at, at clothing, and these are sprint shorts. Uh, and we've done some analysis here with a, with a 12 camera, Vicon motion capture system. We've got force plates in the floor, we take high speed video, um, and we use that data to basically design a sprint short. Now at the moment that's a generic sprint short for a generic athlete. You know, so so part of the um, you know the questions that we're asking in this call is you know what if we could take that uh, data capture and do it you know in situ, I take it out of the lab. You know, what if we could do it in a way where we could personalise that garment for that particular athlete? Um, the second example, those of you who are golfers will recognise the gentleman at the top. Um, uh, basically what we're able to do within sports tech 
is capture swing data from, from golfers. Um, we offer a service which is Pro Vantage, uh, and that's for professional golfers. We can go and analyze elements of their swing um, with a coach, you know, and what you find is each, each golf has a unique characteristic. For example, the grip, each golfer has almost a grip signature like a, like a fingerprint. Um, and when we're talking about developing equipment, one of the things we, can, we, we need to do is basically isolate the equipment from the athlete, because even someone like Lee Westwood has variability in his golf swing, certainly not, just, not as much as perhaps the rest of us, um, but you know, that has an effect when you're developing the equipment. And we actually have golf robots which we can then replicate that swing on when we're doing product development. So I said, so kind of what if with, with those two examples. So, you know, what if we could, you know, take those things out of the lab? What if we could capture data, capture motion data? You know, what if we could, you know, use some sort of smart device, some sort of sensor, you know, capture motion, pressure, force, acceleration, positioning, all of those things. Um, you know, that, that's really what this call is about for us. You know, and just to reiterate, you know, we are, we are not, you know, big in IT, we're very much applied, we are biome biomechanists and we're engineers um, and what we offer really is knowledge of sport, sport specific expertise. You know, we not offer knowledge of the sector which is obviously important um, and like I say, you know, we are, we are basically looking for good ideas um, and there's the, the data on the call. One of the things I will say on there is, is kinematics. If some of you don't understand that term, that's basically the geometry of motion. So you know when you when you saw those sprint shorts and and the lines, that that's kind of a kinematic uh, data capture. Okay. Um, so thanks for your attention and uh, any questions, please. Yeah. <coughs> You're not a goalkeeper, are you? No. Um, for something like golf. Yeah. Um, you track the swing. Um, would you be looking to uh, take that out of the lab and into a commercial context, or keep it, or keep it for um, elite athletes? Yeah, I mean, I think we're we're trying to keep the call as broad as as we can. But one of the things you could see uh, that would be a fantastic opportunity would be if there was some way of, a, of an average golfer or a bad golfer, um, you know, being able to look at their swing. Um, and know what they're doing wrong or you know how they could improve it and things like that. Now obviously you're not going to build a 9 million research facility to do that. Um, if, if, there's a, if there's a way you can do that down, the, down at the driving range then that would be very powerful. So that is a good example of something that we would be very interested in. I mean, we, we've seen an example of your partners, especially when it comes to sportswear and equipment manufacturer, who would be really interested in a solution that helps the mass market kind of evolve what, what currently only exists for professional athletes. So if they were able to introduce a sort of personalization element into the mass market manufacturer of clothes and equipment based on data that is becoming increasingly commonly available, you know, it could be a connect, it could be a smartphone with the accelerometer, it could be any number of things, um, introducing that into their, their manufacturing process. I mean, it's, it's hugely, uh, potentially, it's a hugely commercial, commercially valuable opportunity. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I mean, I think elite athletes is, you know, a certain element of what we do. But if, if you're in this room to make more money than the 25,000 grand you're going to get, which hopefully you all are, um, you know, do you want to be selling it to Lee Westwood or do you want to be selling it to all of the bad golfers in the, in the, in the world, um, which there are many? Hi there, uh, Simon. Um, so, in a nutshell, you're trying, you're looking for people to take this onto consumer devices, whether it be an Xbox with Connect or or mobile devices, and tracking their performance in their particular sport or a particular sport, um, and using that data then to to improve the sport in general. Yeah, I mean, or, or improve their performance. But. Yeah, I mean, I think we're kind of looking at performance, but perhaps we should bring that back to some sort of product or some sort of garment or some sort of equipment. So, you know, using something like Connect to capture data is, is an example. You know, can we capture that data? Can we then say, okay, that, that tells us that you need this type of tennis racket or this type of garment or this type of running shoe, you know, which they can then go and 
and purchase either online or, or wherever. So it's personalization of, of equipment would be one, one thing, one area of interest. Um, but how you actually do that personalization um, without lots of posh equipment would, would basically okay. be one of the things. Have you done any work with uh, Nike on the Nike Fuel and these new devices? Um, we, we've done some work. We've got to be careful with Nike in that our main research partner is Adidas and those two people that don't like each other. Um, uh, but we've done work with Nike but, but not necessarily on footwear in the last sort of five years. So. But in terms of the wearable fuel, yeah, yeah these, these newly emerging uh, biometric gathering sensors yeah. that are giving feed out the gathering data and being able to be able to access it. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there are things out there. I mean, you know, it's worth doing some research, but, but, you know, for example, there are there are trainers that will log data about your run. There's wristbands, which will talk to other garments that you're wearing, and there's other uh, elements like that. We've been involved in some of that, and we haven't in others, but that Nike fuel, we, 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 we obviously we know about it, but we've not been involved in it. Hi, I just want to pick up on the point about the personalization of the equipment. Are you interested in, um, particularly in some sports and also for amateurs or people trying to get fit and things like that, how the, uh, the measurement could lead to personalization of the program and tips and ways to motivate them to become better sportsmen? Is that still within the core? I would say personally yes that you know we do work with manufacturers of gym equipment um, but you know if it's if it's something that helps a sports brand sell more equipment whether that's a racket or whether that's a treadmill or whether that's a pair of running shoes I, I personally think that's within the remit of this call.